Okay, so welcome everyone to this week's One World Mathematical Physics Seminar. And uh, as many of you know, this is a regular seminar series of the International Association of Mathematical Physics, also known as IAMP, which takes place every Tuesday at uh, 14 uh, UTC. You can find more information about the seminar series on the IAMP webpage, and you can watch all past uh, IAMP seminars on our YouTube channel. So if you want to receive the weekly announcement of the IAMP seminar, you're encouraged to subscribe to our mailing list. And if you're watching the seminar on YouTube right now, you can find the instructions on how to subscribe by clicking on the um, M intersection Phi logo and then on the about link. And if instead you're watching the seminar live, you can find all information on our chat. Can you delete? Now, it is a great pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Deepak Dar from IISR Pune. And uh, of course, Deepak does not need uh, any introduction. However, let me only say that uh, among his many recognitions, uh, Deepak has been recently awarded uh, the Boltzmann Medal, and we warmly congratulate uh, for this uh, achievement. Thank uh, you. The, the title of today's seminar is uh, Hard. Oh, no, sorry, the title of today's seminar is the Nematic to High Density Disorder Phase Transition in a System of Hard Roads on a Lattice. And uh, uh, well, uh, we encourage you to use the chat for asking questions uh, and we will come back to them as soon as possible or otherwise uh, you can, uh, uh, if the questions are urgent, you can, also, uh, you can also ask them during the presentation. So now, without any further ado, I would like to leave the floor to our speaker and Deepak, we're very much looking forward to your talk. Okay, and thank you, Professor Pota and Professor Tashaki for in inviting me to give this seminar. So I'm very happy to have this opportunity to describe some recent work with you. So let me start. So the title is Nematic to High Density Disordered Phase Transition in a System of Hard Rods. And uh, this work is done with Agam Shah, who was a student at Aysar Pune, and this was his fifth year thesis project. And R. Rajesh, who is at uh, Institute for Mathematical Sciences in Chennai. And uh, there are some published papers where you can find the details of the work. So, you know, there is this PRD paper, and there is also another one a little bit later. Okay, so let me go to the general plan of talk. Uh, so this, I will start by just a brief introduction to the geometrical phase transitions, and then introduce the model of phase transitions of hard roads, which we call KMERS, and then briefly discuss the low density disorder to pneumatic phase transition. Then I will discuss it's the entropy of KMERS at full packing, and we have some results about the large K limit of this packing, and then discuss the nematic to high density phase transition in KMERS in the large K limit, and then summarize. Okay, so let us start with geometrical phase transitions. So we will discuss the phase transitions in hard rods on a lattice. The Geometrical phase transitions are phase transitions in which there is no notion of temperature or energy. And so basically you have some set of objects which have hardcore interactions. And um, so either the energy is zero or infinite. And so the temperature does not play any role. And the phase transitions is determined by the geometry of the random sets. And we only work with notions of probability and geometry. And so the phase transitions, geometrical phase transitions are conceptually simpler to discuss, and they provide a simple testing ground for more complicated theories of phase transitions. So, you know, so there is a lot of work on things like uh, percolation transition and so on, uh, which uh, the renormalization theory and of all these, which are difficult in general, but this provides a simple setting for studying such transitions. Now, the particular problem of hard rods has a very long history. It started with the work of Onsagar in 49, where he discussed uh, long rods in a solution in continuum. And he showed that if you have cylinders, with some 
very long cylinders with small diameter. And in the limit of very long cylinders with uh, the diameter goes to zero, the length goes to infinity. He showed that they undergo a phase transition in which the low density phase is disordered, you know, like this, but at high density, they become ordered. Uh, so this was a continuum model of long cylinders. And uh, later, Swan Six studied in 63, lattice version of it. And uh, this, we will work mostly with the lattice version. The other examples of geometrical transitions are things like an um, assembly of hard spheres, which undergoes a transition from crystalline to disordered state as a function of density and the percolation model, which all these things have been studied a lot, but I will not have much to say about them just now. Okay, so we let's continue to the phase transitions in hard interacting particles. So one can study interact, uh, hard objects with uh, different shapes and the phase transition depends on the shape. So people have studied triangles, squares, hexagons, octahedra. These are two dimensional octahedra, cubes, etc. three dimensional. So you can study these kinds of stuff in different uh, systems. The structure of the dense pack states depends on the shape. And you know, it is interesting question to ask how does the dense closest packing depend on the particular shapes. For spheres, it was for a long time unknown, but finally it was this, realized that it goes into this HCP kind of structure. But uh, for other shapes like ellipsoids, the questions are still not fully settled. So we will consider the lattice models where the centers of molecules lie on a grid and uh, they have some fixed shape. And then what happens? So let me start with some pictures. So here is a picture of a two dimensional system. First, the top one is of hard squares, two by two squares. And the only interaction is hardcore interaction. And as you increase the density, you get uh, these uh, the pictures are the typical structures at different densities. And um, I don't know, you can sort of see that uh, the left hand side is kind of different from the right hand side. And can we characterize the structure of the different states? That is the typical question we'll ask. The second one is really the model we are going to discuss in detail here. So it is long rods. So you have one by four rods here. And the function of density, you see some difference uh, appearing. And uh, you know, what is the nature of such transitions? So they, these pictures are taken from Barnes in 2009. And the next set of pictures is also taken from the same paper. In this case, the hard objects are called tetraminos. So these are four celled uh, objects and they have Z shaped and L shaped and T shapes. And you see as you change the density, then the structure seems to change a little bit. And can we characterize this? So actually not much is known about these other shapes except for such simulations. The theoretical study of these is much harder and uh, not much has been done. So let me go on. So before we go into some theoretical analysis of this, I thought it is good to put in some experimental realization of the phase transition. So this is the original system of long cylinders in a solution. And uh, Unsagar had realized that tobacco mosaic virus provides a good example of sort of objects, I mean, particles, which are same, same size, and you can put them in solution. And then if the density is high enough, then they become parallel. And then since the size of the molecules is several micrometers, the solution becomes optically active. So in this left-hand side, there is a solution of tobacco mosaic virus in water. And it phase separates by itself into a low density phase and high density phase. And the low density phase is optically inactive. The high density phase is optically active. 
So if you see them in cross light, you can see the difference between them quite a lot. Okay, so that is just to show that these kinds of systems, the phase transitions are actually easy to realize in lab. There are much more complicated systems, you know, the phase transitions being studied here are studied in liquid crystals more generally. And there is enormous technical applications for all of these. But uh, I will not go into the details of them and just go to these lattice models or long rods. So the lattice models were introduced by Swansea. So we can take, for example, the 2D square lattice. And uh, the rods are of width 1 and length k. And they are uh, fixed length. All particles have the same length k. And they are inflex. They are rigid. They are just straight rods. So each rod takes k consecutive sides. And the uh, rods cannot overlap. That is the constraint. So in 2D, there are only two orientations of rods. So this model is different from the model studied by Onsagar in continuum, because you know in, in the there is an orientational entropy which matters in the fact that you know even when things are nearly parallel, they can be small wiggle room, which can you know it is important in the problem. But on lattice, there is no such degree of Freedom. If th things are vertical, then they cannot become, you know, there is no orientational uh, leeway in this. So the behavior of the model can be qualitatively different because the orientational degree of freedom is discrete and not continuous in this model. Okay, so it was realized quite early that one thing one can say about this schemer problem, which is the um, rods of length k is that you can pack the space fully with them. There is a close packing density is one. And there are many ways you can pack it closely. So in this picture, I've shown a k by k square. And you can pack it horizontal or vertical. So a big lattice can be broken into small k by k squares. And each of them can be packed in two ways. And so the total number of configurations with full packing is greater than or equal to 2 to the power n by k squared, n is the number of sides. And for each k squared, there is a factor 2. And of course, this is just a lower bound because much more complicated tilings are possible. So the question which uh, one can ask for this lattice model is that, is there an ordering transition as a function of density? So it is quite clear from the previous discussion, sorry, here, that at close packing density, there are many configurations in which the average orientational order is zero. And so you don't, there is no orientational ordering at close packing. But then what happens to the Onsagar argument, which said that, you know, near, in the continuum problem, there is ordering. So what's the difference? It is known that if k equal to 2 is the dimer model problem, and for dimer problem, when the density of holes is finite, there is no ordering transition. So this is an exact result, which is uh, proved by Heilman and Lieb in 72. After that, uh, it was not clear what happens. In fact, in 1975, Dijen and Pro wrote a book, uh, The Physics of Liquid Crystals, and they discussed this model of long rods as one of the models of liquid crystals. And they said that it was not clear if there is any transition for any k. Because for each k, you know, at high density, there is no ordering. At the maximum possible density, there is no ordering. So it was not clear that there is ordering at any density. In fact, uh, we had studied with uh, Anand Mohan Ghosh and Jacobson in 2007, some Monte Carlo simulations in transformatrix stuff. And we found that there is no phase transition for k equal to 3 or 4. There is no evidence of phase transition for k equal to 3 or 4. OK? However, if k is bigger than 6, then we found that actually there is a transition. And uh, there are three phases. So at low density, there is a low density disordered phase. At intermediate densities, you get ordering, and there is an orientational order. But at very high density, near one, 
one again gets a disordered configuration. So there are three phases, the low density disordered phase, the intermediate density nematic phase, and the high density disordered phase. And these are shown schematically in this. Uh, this picture is for k equal to seven, which is the first one which shows some kind in this behavior. So the low density phase is given here and the high density phase has equal number of horizontal and vertical rods shown here in green and red. And uh, it has interesting order, but that has been uh, sort of what we wanted to characterize and understand. And also the transition between these phases. Okay, so first let us discuss the low density transition from disorder to pneumatic phase. This one is actually quite well understood. <clears throat> At intermediate densities, the ordered state has higher entropy than the unordered state. This seems a little bit contradictory because one normally guesses that the ordered state will have lower entropy. The point is that here there is a lower orientational entropy because rods are all parallel. But since they are parallel, the loss in orientational entropy is offset by the gain in translational entropy because they can move around much more freely. The hardcore constraint is less if, mm, effective when they are parallel. <clears throat> okay, so, <clears throat> so there is uh, the, at intermediate densities, the ordered state exists. Now, what is the nature of transition? For the square lattice, there are two ordered states. One is uh, where majority of things are horizontal, majority of th the other is where the majority are vertical. And so if you go close to the transition, you will expect that there is a disordered state in which there will be large regions which are horizontally ordered and large regions which are vertically ordered. And then, you know, they will compete with each other and eventually one of them will win. So if you look at the large scale structure of this, it has two ordered states. So this is in the expected to be in the POTS model Q equal to two universality class. And so uh, if you have other lattices like triangular lattice, they, then you have three orderings possible, three state, three directions possible. And then it becomes to the Q equal to three POTS model class. And this expectation that this transition is in the Ising universality class is uh, verified by simulations and um, consistent with the results of simulations of Matos Fernandez and Fisher and Wink. Okay, so now I will discuss the entropy of long roads at full packing because this is required for the later part about the second transition. So the number of ways one can cover a, a full KL by KL lattice it varies exponentially as a constant times is constant times the total area. So we define entropy per site at full packing as S of K is the limit of log of the number of ways divided by the number of sites. And so that is the entropy per site. Now the exact value of S of K is only known for the dimer case K equal to two. This is uh, the Catalan constant divided by pi. And uh, that is a well-known result in statistical physics due to Castellin and Fisher in 1961. Okay, but for any other K, the value of S of K is not known exactly. For S of three, we had some numerical estimate, which is given here. Uh, based on transfer matrix calculations for finite size cylinders. Okay, but for bigger K, uh, even the transfer matrix kind of numerical methods become harder to work with. And so we didn't try to push, or we tried but we didn't succeed very well to, to push these kind of estimates to higher values of K. Okay, but anyway, now I will try to argue for you and show that in the limit of large K, S of K goes like constant multiplied by log K by K square. And uh, using tight lower and upper bounds on S of K, we will show that this constant A in front is exactly one in 2D. And then we will argue that this result actually holds for all D. 
and in all dimensions d uh, bigger than two, you have the same behavior. H of k is roughly log k by k squared. Okay, so lower bound on. So we will prove this by using a coincide tight lower and upper bounds. So first, let us discuss the lower bound. We have already shown that S of k is greater than log two by k squared because for each um, k by k square, some small square with k squared sides, you have at least two ways of co covering it fully. Okay, but now let us have a improved bound, which is the following, that you take the KL by KL lattice. We are taking the lattice, the size of the square to be multiple of K, because clearly if the size of the square is not a multiple of K, it is possible that you cannot cover it fully at all with uh, Kimmers, okay? But anyways, we'll take it to be multiple of K and take this KL by KL lattice and break it into strips of width K and length KL. Then you look at one of these strips and you try to cover it fully with horizontal or vertical rods. If omega KL is the number of ways of covering each strip, then the, you know, each strip can be independently covered and the WL is greater than or equal to omega KL to the power L. So now this, Omega R, which is the number of ways of covering an R by K rectangle with this full um, with the rods, satisfies the relation Omega R equal to Omega R minus one plus Omega R minus K. Because we start from the left, the first thing can be either a vertical rod. If it's not a vertical rod, then you have to put down K horizontal rods. So this gives you the way of covering first with the vertical rod and the rest, whatever it is. And the second is with covering with K horizontal rods and covering the rest with R minus omega of R minus K ways. Okay, so this recursion relation has this um, solution that omega R goes like lambda to the power R and lambda is the root of this equation. So, lambda to the power K minus lambda to the power K minus one equal to one. So, for each k, you can solve this, find the largest value of lambda which satisfies this. And then it gives you a bound on S of k, which is log lambda by k, because this is, uh, R is the size of the rectangle, but each is, is, uh, vertical column has k sides. So the entropy is actually log lambda by k. Okay, so now we want to discuss just the, uh, behavior of this equation for large k. For large k, lambda is near one. So I write lambda is equal to one plus b by k. And then lambda to the power k is exponential b. And this can be written as lambda to the power k into one minus one by lambda. And that equation simplifies to equation b exponential b is approximately equal to k, to lowest order in k. And this is called the Lambert equation. It has the, for large k, the solution is roughly B of k, B is equal to log k, or a little bit better approximation is log of k by log k. But you know, if you keep on writing, then you get terms like log, log, log k and so on. And then log, 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 foot logs and so on. And so this is called the Lambert equation. It is well studied in mathematics. But we will not need all these details. We will just say that since it goes like log k, s of k multiplied by k squared by log k is greater than or equal to one. Because, okay, so this is the lower bound. Now, an upper bound on W of L, the number of ways of covering this square, was given by Gagunashvili and Priyashev in 79. And what they said was that, let us consider the K by K super lattice of size. You know, you take this big square lattice, but mark out the squares at a separation K from each other into a big square. These are the purple squares here. And the coordinates are multiples of K. Now, if you take one of these squares and see how it is covered in the full covering, it can be covered by a horizontal or vertical rod. But if you cover it by a horizontal rod, you can cover it in k possible ways and vertical rod in k possible ways because you can label the sides one to 
uh, of road one to k consecutively. So each of these sites can be covered in at most two k ways. So what we will do is we will first fix the way each of these purple sites is covered, and then we will try to find a covering which will uh, fill the full lattice and provide a full covering. And Gagunashvili and Priyaj have proved that given an arbitrary assignment of how the superlative sites are covered, the covering can be completed so that all sites are covered in at most one way. Many times you cannot cover it. Okay, so that in zero ways or one way. So then it gives you WL is less than 2k to the power L squared because L squared is the number of different colored squares. And taking the logs, we get S of k is less than log 2k by k squared. So it, the lower bound was log k by k squared and the upper bound is log 2k by k squared. And so these two bounds together implies that k must be exactly equal to one. This uh, coefficient in front of the log must be exactly one. Now, one can also study the road problem in higher dimensions. And here there is a picture of a three dimensional system of roads taken from Geshwin et al. 2017. Sorry. So one would expect that this result a equal to one is holds exactly for all higher dimensions as well. So that is an rather surprising result a priori. And this is because in, if you are in higher dimensions a three, then one way to cover a three dimensional space with the cameras is to cover it layer by layer. So you work with the two dimensional layer, cover it fully, then take the next layer, cover it fully and so on. So each layer is two dimensional and the entropy is S of K D equal to two. And so the three dimensional entropy is certainly bigger than the two, bigger than or equal to the two dimensional entropy. But now I will try to give you a more careful estimate using perturbation theory which says that the difference between these two entropies, the three-dimensional entropy and the two-dimensional entropy is of the order of k to the power minus k. So for large k, it is very small. And the two order one by k squared, it is the same. So it is still log k by k squared and the a is still one. Okay, the idea of the proof. We use the method introduced for by Bellman and Nigam in 867 by introducing anisotropic activity. So I have the rods, but I will give an weight Z to the vertical. So let's work in 3D. So I introduce an activity ZX, ZY equal to Z for the horizontal rods and ZZ equal to Z prime for the vertical rods. And uh, then start with Z prime equal to zero, then you don't have any vertical rods and then the entropy is is calculable as the two dimensional problem, whatever it is. And now I will write the part partition function for full covering of the problem with ZZ prime L as a power series in Z prime, which is the activity of the Z bonds, Z kimers. And so this is the Z zero L, this is the when Z prime is zero, that comes with coefficient one. And the next term, which is a um, power of Z prime, the, actually the first non-trivial term only comes at order K. Because in each layer, when you remove a rod, it has to be fully covered and there will be K different holes. So, um, so you know, you, you cannot have less than K holes in each layer. So each layer will have K holes and you need at least K rods uh, k vertical rods come together, then only you can cover it fully. And the next term will be of the z prime by z to the power 2k and so on. So now we want to determine what are these coefficients a1, a2. So that leading contribution to a1 comes from configurations in which you have adjacent parallel k rods in, in one particular height level. You will have k rods with the same height and they will be adjacent. These can be produced from k planar rods on top of each other. So you start with the unperturbed system in which you have two dimensional layering. Then at some places you will find that there, are, there is a rod 
and in the next layer the rod is sitting on top of it and the next layer it is sitting on top of it and there are k of these one after another then you can take this k by k square and flip it into vertical rods and you can do this at different places and that provides you um, extra entropy okay so you in the cumulant language you take the log of this and you know can you can expand this in powers so 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 the coefficient a1 i can estimate but the given a horizontal rod most of the time you will not find another in the next layer the rod exactly above the next rod will be exactly above with only with probability 1 by 2k and the next layer will also be on top of this will be 1 by 2k squared and so on so if you want k of these on top of each other it is 1 by 2k to the power k minus 1 and the first rod you could fit anywhere but you know the number of since it is a horizontal rod uh, we will count it once only uh, from the left end, let us say. And so the, the beginning coefficient is n by k. Anyway, the whole function a1 uh, is 1 k to the power k, 1 upon k to the power k, where n is the number of sides. So the contribution to entropy is order 1 over k to the power k. And this is true term by term for all terms. Okay, but then there are many terms. And uh, we were not able to put strict bounds on the contribution of all these terms. And so this statement that uh, this statement that is order k to the power k is based on the perturbation series term by term analysis, but there is no proof that the series converges. Okay. So now I will discuss the some so sorry to sum, uh, summarize this so we have shown or we have argued that in all dimensions d the entropy at full packing will be log k by k squared with coefficient one now i will discuss some plausible but non rigorous arguments to support the conjecture that the nematic to high density disordered phase transition is the first order phase transition in all d dimensional hypercubical lattices for large k and we say large k, but actually we sort of find that if k is bigger than 8 or 10 is big enough. And this is a schematic picture. Yeah. On the x-axis, we show the chemical potential, a reduced chemical potential because there is no temperature. So beta is set to 1. So this is the chemical potential. And the y-axis is the density of holes. When you increase the chemical potential, density of holes increases but this seems to undergo a discontinuous jump at some particular value of k, and that is the first order transition. So the right now, this is all we will say here, and we will come back to this picture again later. So this phase transition, which is the first order transition, will occur at some chemical potential mu star of k, and uh, the density at this is actually not fixed, no, because it's a first order transition. There are two densities, epsilon one, and epsilon 2, which are the densities of holes across the transition. And we will give some evidence in favor of this conjecture, the exact results, that we can tell what is epsilon 1. Epsilon 1 for large k has this behavior. Epsilon 1 times k squared divided by log k is 1. And the chemical potential mu star has the behavior that mu star divided by k log k is 1 for k goes to infinity. And epsilon 2, the density of holes in the high density n, has the property that epsilon 2 by epsilon 1 goes to 0 as k becomes larger. Again, interestingly, this leading behavior is independent of dimension d. And there are no multiple, all the constants have been determined exactly. You know? Normally, people are able to say that this behavior is like log k by k squared, but they are not able to determine the coefficients. Here we determine the critical value of mu, which is goes like k log k, but the coefficient is 1. Okay, so let me give you the argument here. So let s of epsilon be the entropy per site when the density of unfilled sites is epsilon. So instead of working with rho, 
since we are in the high density case, I work with uh, epsilon, which is the density of holes. So rho is one minus epsilon. Rho is the density of covered sites. Epsilon is the density of uncovered sites. And we have the obvious bound that S is greater than or equal to S nematic epsilon, where in S nematic epsilon, we will put in the constraint that all rods have to be horizontal. OK? So then calculation of S nematic epsilon is easy because it's a one-dimensional problem. Different layers don't interact with each other. I can solve the one-dimensional problem. The one-dimensional problem is fairly straightforward. Uh, there is a rod of length k. You can imagine, reduce its length to size one and have a color red for it. And hole will be color white. And then you have a chain of white and red dots. The number of red dots is one minus epsilon by k and y times L, which is L is the length of the rod. And so, you know, you can calculate the number of ways this can be done quite easily. And this gives you the S nematic epsilon is very straightforward. It is this expression. Okay. So our key observation is that for large K, the difference between S epsilon and S nematic epsilon is very small. It is of order K to the power minus K. And this is what I'll try to argue now. So in the nematic case, the grand partition function per site satisfies the equation lambda to the power k is minus length. So this is again, fully nematic case is one dimensional problem. So I have a one dimensional hard rods. So that is called the Tonks gas. Uh, Tonks is in continuum. This is the uh, lattice version of it. And so you can write down the in partition function per site for this problem and uh, satisfy this equation. Now consider the first correction to the grand partition function per site in the, so I do the same perturbation theory in ZY, but now not for the fully packed state, but for the state in which we have holes also with activity Z. So omega ZZY will be given by omega ZZ0. This is the partition function with Z for the horizontal road, ZY for the vertical. And it will have a first, correction term which is proportional to zy. Now this is not zy to the power k because there are holes already there in the unperturbed case. So I can try to determine what is this epsilon a1. And so you can put a1 when the unperturbed problem there was a hole. So it's easy to check that a1 is exactly equal to n times epsilon to the power k. Epsilon is the density of holes. We are taking the limit of large k for fixed epsilon this quantity goes to zero fast. And so this tends to zero. However, if you, since we are working with k goes to infinity, we will also be taking the limit of epsilon goes to zero. And so I have to worry about the limit epsilon goes to zero. But if epsilon goes to zero, then the, the z, which is the activity of the horizontal rods, goes to like epsilon to the power minus k. That's easy to derive from this equation. And on putting zy equal to z, we will get the contribution of the first order term is finite. OK, so this uh, series, this term will become of order 1, because you know this is epsilon. OK, but in this limit, a group of R parallel vertical rods makes a contribution of the same order. So if you have R parallel rods shown here, then the contribution is still epsilon to the power k. And uh, the effect of other rods is only z by lambda to the power k whole to the power r minus 1, where r is the number of rods. So z tends to lambda to the power k for epsilon tending to zero, so this quantity is nearly one. And you know you have to sum this series to get the finite answer. But these are geometric series. And summing over R, we get the contribution due to islands of parallel vertical rods. So this is just Z into lambda to the power minus K is one minus lambda. And so you get the first order term is epsilon to the power K is Z. And now you have an extra factor lambda. And uh, then as epsilon tends to zero, this contribution actually diverges. So this shows 
that an instability of the fully nematic state to creation of islands of opposite orientation near full packing. When I try to do a perturbation in ZY, then this perturbation will diverge. First term will diverge as epsilon tends to zero. And here is a picture of actual plotting of this function F. This is the first order correction to the unperturbed answer F lambda fractional correction. So the point is that as epsilon goes to zero, this will diverge. But when epsilon is finite, then this is actually quite small because we said that it goes to a value, but the value is one upon k to the power k. So here I plotted for k equal to 7, 14, 21, and you see the y-axis values are 10 to the power minus 5, 15, 25. So even for k equal to 14, the first correction is very small. It's 10 to the power minus 13 or some such thing much of the time. OK. So the net conclusion of all this is that for most of the values of epsilon, the s nematic provides a very good estimate of the true entropy for large k. Now, while s nematic of epsilon is a good approximation to s of k, it must fail for small epsilon because we know s of epsilon equal to zero is greater than zero, but s nematic or epsilon equal to zero is the one dimensional entropy at epsilon equal to zero is zero. Okay, but s of epsilon is a convex function of epsilon, and so we have s of epsilon is greater than, sorry, s of epsilon minus epsilon ds by ed epsilon is bigger than or equal to s of zero. So here is, it is drawn here. This is the function s of epsilon. You take any point and you draw the tangent. Uh, it, from any point, it will be above s zero. So if I know that s zero is more than zero, then I can draw a tangent to the s nematic curve. And uh, so suppose it, the tangent from at this point s zero on the s nematic curve touches the curve epsilon one. Then uh, in this range between s zero and epsilon one, it is better entropically for the system to phase separate into two parts, one with nematic order with whole density epsilon one and one with no holes. Okay, so that is our sort of introduction to the first order phase transition. And uh, so this tangent construction suggests that the system can just phase separate and it will be much more entropy than S nematic would give. Okay, so we argue now that for large k, S epsilon is well approximated by S nematic, supplemented by the knowledge of S0 and convex envelope construction. So S nematic is not working at epsilon near zero. But if you supplement it with S0 and convex envelope construction, then you have a good behavior of S epsilon for almost all epsilon. Okay, so now, which is correct to something like one upon k to the power k. So now I can use it, this s nematic to get estimate of epsilon one, and that will be the value of chemical and the slope there will give you the value of the chemical potential at which this transition occurs. So using the explicit formula for s nematic, it's easy to see that one by k log of this quantity is equal to s zero, but k epsilon one actually goes to zero as epsilon goes to zero. So you can tailor expand this and it gives you epsilon one is nearly equal to S zero. And so it varies like log k by k squared. And uh, then at this value of epsilon one, you take the derivative and you see that it's equal to log k to leading order. And so we get mu star by k log k is one. And in this approximation, epsilon to the whole density in in the dense phase at coexistence is zero. Okay, now we'll try to argue that these asymptotic results remain unchanged, even when we work with true S of, S, S of epsilon and not S nematic. The effect of holes in the dense phase is taken partially into account by a more elaborate but still approximate calculation. 
using a sequence of approximations of increasing accuracy. At each level of approximation, the main results conjectured before remain valid and unchanged. Okay, so this is uh, the phase which we will use. Um, it's, it's called high density disordered phase one, HDD one. And it is defined as follows. Let me consider a tile, which is a one by K vertical rectangle like this, or a K by K rectangle like this, or K plus one cross K rectangle like this. And this one is covered by a vertical rod. This is covered by K horizontal rod. This is covered by K horizontal rods, but they can slide inside, you know, to the left or right because this width is K plus one. Okay, so now I take these three tiles and put them together one after another in any order and make a big strip of length L and then put these strips vertically on top of each other to make the full covering of the big square L by L. Okay. So, however, the partition function of this HDD1 phase is easy to calculate. The weight of the tiles we will take, so Z for each rod and X for each horizontal, each vertical column. So this will weight XZ. This has K horizontal, K column, so it will be X to the power K and there are K rods, so it will be Z to the power K. Here it will be X to the power K plus one, Z to the power K. But then there are many tiles which are different you know, because the horizontal rod can slip. We add up all of these and the weight is two to the power K, um, Z to the power K. In fact, I can leave some of these empty. And that is also allowed. And so I can put one plus two Z to the power K. And so these are three different tiles. The partition function per site is given by, uh, so the full partition function will be given by, you know, one upon one minus sum of all these weights. And uh, you have to put W1 plus W2 plus W3 equal to one. And solve this equation that gives you x star and x star to the power minus one by k gives you the partition function per site. So for any given z, you can determine lambda by solving this equation. And uh, let's just look at this a little bit. So if you take the limit of large z, then xz tends to a finite value, call it alpha. And uh, this alpha satisfies the equation alpha plus alpha to the power k equal to one because the third term will not contribute. Thus we recover. So from this, you can recover the exact entropy of the full packing case using only the first two tiles. So if you use the first two tiles, then you get an estimate of entropy, which is a lower bound, but it's asymptotically exact. Now, when you use the third tile in addition, then you are allowing holes and uh, we takes into account the fact that if you start with this picture here and start with all things on the left and one vertical rod, then I remove the vertical rod, then these rods can slide. And there are two to the power k possible configurations for each configuration of the vertical rod removed. Okay, so it takes into account the fact that there are exponentially large number in k of configurations for each rod removed. The total weight of that third tile compared to the second is two to the power k times x, but x is order k to the power minus k. So it is only two to the power k over k to the power minus k near the second transition. So the epsilon two is very small and does not change the leading behavior of epsilon one and mu in the tangent construction. And now you can see that, you know, I took these three tiles, but I can take one fourth one or fifth one and term by term, they don't change the analysis. And this behavior is robust and does not change the result. So one can take more complicated tiles because we can sequentially try to add configuration. So here is a picture in which we have one by two K. The width is no longer K, it is two K. And you can either fill it with two vertical rods or one vertical rod which can slide or there is a K by 2K this rectangle in which you can either fill everything with horizontal rods or with vertical, some vertical rods 
or with some holes, you know. So in this case, there are two k minus one rods in this, and there are k holes. And uh, here, so the weight is here uh, easy to write. It is x for each column. So it x multiplied by two vertical rods or k plus one ways of putting one vertical rod. The horizontal is x to the power k. There are k plus two into the uh, ways of putting two k rods and roughly two to the power k into k ways of putting one vertical rod and you can put higher order terms. And th then you have to put the condition w1 plus w2 equal to one, solve for x and the partition function per site is given in terms of the x star, which is the solution of this equation. So in the large z limit, uh, you get uh, x goes like z to the power minus two and the equation for the coefficient alpha becomes this alpha plus k plus two alpha to the power k equal to one. Now I put alpha equal to one minus b by k as before. And now I get equation b e to the power b equal to k into k plus two, which gives you b equal to two log k, which is uh, okay because that is consistent with our result because now you have with two k. So then the entropy per column is two log k. So the HDD2 phase has higher entropy per side at full quaking than HDD1, but the asymptotic behavior in K near the transition is unaffected. One can add more tiles to this, but you know, the same argument goes again, maybe it is robust. So we can also do the calculation with strips of width K for all possible horizontal coverings. So here, there is a yellow rectangle which shows all possible mm, rectangles of various widths, uh, which are filled with only horizontal rods. So, and G is the sum over all possible rectangles of all possible covering with horizontal and vertical. So, I can have just horizontal rods or one vertical rod with on two sides two horizontal mm, rectangles or two vertical rods and rectangles. And so the, this partition function is R plus R times the weight of this, which is Z times uh, Z Y times X and another R and so on. So it's a simple geometric series, which can be summed. But the value of R itself is also a series where, you know, you only sum over horizontal um, roads um, configurations in which the length of the rectangle is L. Then this is omega L of z for each horizontal layer to the power k. So omega l z is easy to compute, but now you have to raise it to power k, then we multiply by x to the power and then sum over l. So this calculation is non-trivial and we have not been able to evaluate it in closed form, but we can do this numerically and then calculate the partition function, uh, calculate x star and then uh, get the, this profile. So this is the 1D calculation of strip done numerically because we didn't calculate the partition function analytically because we couldn't sum up the series analytically. And uh, so in the one dimensional strip, you know, this is a one dimensional system in which there is a short range interactions. And so actually it shows a rounded off singularity. And so if you look very carefully, these are not really sharp jumps they are rounded off to one part in 10 to the part three or so. So it is not visible here, but we can do better. It is shown in the paper that, uh, you know, so this singularity is actually rounded off, but it, if there is a two dimensional problem has a sharp phase transition, then presumably that will, the singularity will be actually a first order transition. So this is our conjecture. And so here is the summary. The hard rod system undergoes two phase transitions as a function of activity Z of rods for large K. The entropy per site at full packing is this log K by K squared with coefficient one. And this is true for all hypercubical lattices of dimension D greater than two. We have conjectured or provided evidence in favor of this conjecture that the asymptotically exact result for the, the second transition is a first order transition. We give you the position where it occurs and the jump 
across the jump of density across the first order transition asymptotically exact for large k. Now, given the simplicity and robustness of the conjecture, a simpler and more insightful proof may be expected to exist, but unfortunately, I was not able to see. So let me stop here. That is, so I will stop here. Thank you very much for this uh, very nice talk. And uh, I now leave the floor to the audience for questions. Can I ask a question? Yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. It was very interesting. Uh, well, first naive question is that, uh, so you, you conjecture that this second transition is first order when K is very large. Yes. But uh, hmm. do you expect that this to be the first order for even small K? Whenever, whenever yeah, so a... at least our, our evidence suggests that even K 10 and bigger is certainly first order. K equal to seven, we are not, there is a transition at K equal to seven, but whether it is first order or not is not so certain. Mm. Okay. So I think David Hughes raised hand. Yes, I, um, uh, in more than two dimensions, yes. is there any possibility or suggestion that the, uh, there might be some orientational ordered phases that are not pneumatic? You know, the construction you described to get the entropy was seemed like a construction of sort of a layered system where the rods were mostly yeah. in one layer mm. disordered in that layer but then layered you see what yes. i mean yes yeah so we have done some monte carlo simulations of the three-dimensional system and this is exactly what happened there is a low density disordered phase there is a pneumatic phase at intermediate density and the high density phase is layered and disordered in each layer. I see. So you think it has long range orientational order in that sense, all the way to close packing. Yeah, but layered. Except in two dimensions, it doesn't. Yeah. So the higher dimensions shows layering transition. The high density phase is layered, but within a layer, there is no orientational order. Yeah, yeah. Sort of a smectic. Maybe, sort of. Yes, yes, it is. It <laughs> Unconventional is like smectic. Right. <laughs> Thank you. So I see oh, another. Yeah. I see another raised hand from Alessandro. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, okay. Thank, thank you for the nice talk. Um, so th this is connected actually with with the previous question. So maybe already answered, but just to be sure. So in in, in two dimensions, you. you uh, you try to, um, uh, to did, you, did you try to check whether the, there is some uh, columnar order or something that in, in the high density phase? Uh, did you exclude it uh, in, in some way? Or? Yeah, so uh, as far as we can tell, it is not columnar order. But uh, Monte Carlo simulations in the high density phase are rather difficult because there are all these jamming problems. And, you know, so uh, it takes very long time to stabilize and we are not sure of the results uh, to perfect accuracy. But as far as we can tell, we look for what possible order is there in the high density phase. And so far, it, it's not very clear. We are not able to characterize the high density correlations in the high density phase clearly. Okay, but, but so you, you say that in dimension three or more, th this uh, Ah, so, ah, so you say it's layered order, not the columnar or something in, in three dimensions. Yeah, it's so a different sort of order. Right. In each layer, we expect the ordering is the same as the two-dimensional layering, two-dimensional order. OK. If and any which order we are not exists. able to tell. Okay. Which we are not able to tell. And the different layers are more or less independent. OK. Um, so another question is, um, so uh, is there any connection between, so uh, did you try to consider uh, some lattice version of the um, uh, uh, Q-state clock model and uh, connect this first order phase transition with uh, 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 first order phase transition in the, so this is like a Q, Q equal to clock yeah, so model. 
uh, can, can you say something about it? We have looked at the triangular lattice where the number of the orientations is three in two dimensions. Mm -hmm. And uh, things look very much similar. As I said, the first transition becomes Q equal to three parts model universality class. The second transition looks the same as the Q equal to you know, the, uh, the transition on the square lattice. Okay, but, but, but uh, could there be something happening for Q large or do you expect that uh, any Q is the same more or less? I would say that as far as we can tell, it looks the same, but this is only Monte Carlo's evidence and not mm, more. Okay, uh, sorry, just the last uh, very basic question. So is it clear that the thermodynamic limit of the uh, entropy at full packing exists. So, so I guess you, you consider just the KL times KL square with open boundary conditions. But if you take uh, other shapes uh, um, or other boundary conditions. Ah, no, so what, what, ah, so certainly suppose, for example, I take L to be prime number 37. Mm -hmm. Then 37 by 37 square cannot be fully covered by nine months. Okay. Right. So, so clearly the entropy will be a non-trivial function only when you put in this constraint that the at least the product of length and width should be fully divisible by k, but uh, preferably both of them are separately divisible by k. Then in this subset of cases, there is a entropy. Uh, more general boundary conditions, I guess, will depend very much on the boundary condition. In some cases, the entropy will be minus infinite. Ah, OK, OK. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, are there other questions from the audience? Daniel, <laughs> I see. Oh, mm, yes, thanks. So thanks for, for the nice talk. So. Is it possible to also consider rods of different size? I, I wonder whether you get also interesting things. If you have like k, k plus one or k and two k. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, certainly one can study them as well. But uh, I have not studied the effect of polydispersity in the second transition so far. But you would expect similar similar behavior or uh, if you just ask different? me uh, i haven't thought enough about it but i would say it will be the first order transition will remain a first order transition thanks um Madhuso, then i can ask a question yes uh you know uh thanks deepak it's a nice talk i know mm -hmm. what can you make any conjecture about what would happen if you allowed uh, the continuum variation in the orientations, say even in 2D, for example? Ah. I think if the answer changed substantially. No, 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 I haven't studied it in great detail. Uh, we have studied the problem of rectangles in continuum, but with fixed orientation. So if you take rectangles, which are only horizontal or vertical, then it looks like it is in the same behavior as this for so, long rectangles. But okay, for the case where the orientation can also change, yeah. uh, I don't know very well. Whether uh, you will still get a disordered phase at high density is not very clear. I would guess so. Uh, no. Take the extreme limit of spheres then one knows that um, there is a first order transition in hard sphere limit. Yeah. So, you know, just by continuity, anything in between is also first order. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Uh, can I ask another question? Yes. Do you have any idea of the correlation lens involved? Yeah, so it depends on uh, what uh, different correlations can have different correlation length. One particular length scale is the sep average separation between unoccupied sites. Mm -hmm. So when epsilon goes to zero, this is uh, just one by epsilon, let us say, not one by epsilon to the power one by k. 
because you know because the holes can be broken into different types and if you take one hole of one color with the whole screen will be color a b c one two three four five and if you look at holes of one color they are average separation will be uh, of order one by epsilon uh, no we don't know any other uh, characterization of the correlations between the holes so i'm not able to give any more precise answer so you did not try to evaluate like the um... The decay of two point functions or something like that? Uh, numerically, you cannot, uh, they, these functions decay very slowly. So it is hard to study. And they are orientation dependent. And there are, um, uh, you know, there are oscillations because the, uh, uh, there is the periodicity with K in the function. Mm -hmm. I see. So it's, yeah, it's and tough. Yeah. He said K to K. 4K, and it is very tough to analyze numerically. Thank you. I see another raised hand from Alessandro again. Yeah, ju just maybe wanted to to add that uh, actually, um, I don't know, th these works uh, of, of Deepak for me were uh, very inspiring. I mean, we started with uh, Margherita Disertori to work uh, some years ago on, on these topics, and uh, yes. we got some results. Uh, on the existence of the intermediate phase in two dimensions, uh, uh, yes. but managed to, we didn't ma manage to prove anything on the high density phase, which is, uh, as far as I know, uh, I mean, uh, open from a rigorous point of view. But even worse, and I would like maybe to, to publicize this as a, <laughs> as a more reachable open problem, in three dimensions, uh, uh, we, we tried but failed uh, to prove orientational order of the um, of, of the long rod phase, the one that uh, Deepak uh, showed before in, in a picture. So we, we, we tried to prove that at intermediate densities, there is an orient on, on, on nematic uh, orientational phase uh, of uh, K times one times one rods, uh, and we failed. And we, we proved something similar for, for uh, sort of anisotropic plaquettes. But uh, the, 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 this, uh, one would expect layering, as, as you say, in three dimensions, but we, we didn't manage to, to prove it. One, one, one should use some, some form of pyrogov sinai theory that in two dimensions is uh, uh, relatively simple. In three dimensions, we didn't manage to, to, to get good definitions of uh, fires contours. And, uh, but, yeah. but I think this should be doable. And, uh, so, so maybe this is good no, to point out. We can interest you in exploring this further. We, I actually liked very much your paper. We, of course, we have seen it before. And uh, yeah, the pro these geometrical problems are apparently quite simple, but uh, the progress seems to be very slow in time. Uh, <laughs> yes, I understand. <laughs> uh, are there uh, other questions or comments? Okay, it doesn't seem to, to be the case. So let's thank again uh, our speaker Deepak today for this uh, very nice talk and for the discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you.